Ramadan Mubarak and welcome to this special video podcast where we have our special guests joining us today, Balqis and Ammar, to share their experiences of spending Ramadan abroad. Of course, Ramadan in Oman is special enough, but to spend it abroad, it must be a different experience. So we are here today, inshallah, to hear from them. Welcome. Thank you for having us today. Uh, my name is Ammar Lawati. Uh, I studied at the University of Leeds uh, in the United Kingdom. Welcome, Ammar. Uh, and I'm Balqis Al Qasmi. I studied at Northeastern University in the US. Welcome, Balqis. We are definitely happy to have you here, guys, today. And uh, we want to know how different was it being abroad and having to spend Ramadan? Of course, we all know that in Oman we have all the family atmosphere, and being around the family was must be good. But then being abroad is a whole different. How different was it for you guys? Uh, it was it was different for sure. Um, the hardest thing for me about doing Ramadan abroad uh, was being away from family. Um, you miss all the gatherings. Uh, the atmosphere just yeah. doesn't feel the same. Um, especially when doing Ramadan in a non-Muslim country, uh, it's just a normal day there. You you don't feel the Ramadan vibe, if I if I can say that. Um, and so you just go around and try to uh, to finish your work and your studies uh, and do the best you can. That's true, actually, especially being a student, um, having to cope with both uh, schedules and having to make the best use of both studies and Ramadan must be challenging. It must have been also challenging for you, Balqis, Indeed. being in the US. Indeed, I had the same challenges as well, but uh, I can also add to that, uh, it's like the long hours. Um, sometimes we had to break our fast at, at like 8.30 and like sometimes even 9 p.m. That's true. Um, and like, as he mentioned, like the fact that it's like a non-Muslim country, they did not really have like a, these special uh, treatments for us, you know, That's as like, true, you know, yeah. people fasting. So like that added to the challenge. Absolutely. I mean, I can share this experience with you, especially Ammar, that being in the UK, fasting times and breaking your fast could be as late as nine, quarter yeah. fast nine. It just didn't seem normal for us to just like stay fasting until that time. So of course, having to fast for that long is totally different to what we have here in Oman. In Oman, the best case scenario, you would fast for 14, 15 hours, I guess. But in there, you have to add another five hours. So yeah, uh, having true. to stay um, not eating and having to worry about your iftar until that late, uh, definitely challenge us. I can recall multiple occasions where you know, just like I uh, had to struggle with that. But of course, from your side, being students, uh, having to manage that time, that having to squeeze all those activities you have to do uh, within such a short spam, I'm talking about, of course, after you've been fueled, after you've made your iftar. How, how different was it for you guys? How did you deal with that time management? Yeah, so of course, uh, the long hours uh, was something slightly hard to, to manage, uh, especially in, uh, in my case, yeah. um, where uh, Ramadan would usually come in May and June. Mm -hmm. uh, this period is usually the exams period at most universities. Yeah. So um, with the studies and with the fasting, it's uh, I had to I had to flip my my whole schedule. But indeed. So <laughs> I would start studying after iftar and stay up uh, stay up all night and then go home and get some sleep. Uh, That's, so, yeah. That must be definitely challenging. And alongside with that, having to worry about all of the Ramadan practices and all of yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, of course. It must have been challenging. I'm curious to know about you, Balqis, as well. I How mean, different was it? Yeah, it was like um, when I was like in class, I had like the same issue with like, you know, flipping the schedule and like everything, like trying to finish my studies at mm -hmm. night instead. Uh, but I recall this uh, experience that was kind of like a bit of a like a different experience for me to experience like abroad. Okay. Um, I had like um, uh, during my third year of university, uh, I had um, a semester off where I instead did like a full-time job. And there in the U.S., like as we mentioned, it's like a non-Muslim country, you know, like they don't really have those, uh, you know, work timing, like special Ramadan timing or whatever. Yeah, that's true. So like I had to actually do like the nine hours and I like I tried to negotiate with them um, uh, to like, uh, you know, take my break out of like the nine hours and have it eight hours all like all together. Uh, but they refuse, you know, like, um, you know, with like the country there, like the, their laws um, kind of like prohibit like us from like working more than six hours in like back to back. So mm -hmm. like we have to have like our break. So it was kind of a challenge, just like having to finish nine hours, like with a break that I don't really need, which is like yeah. for lunch. Like I, d I didn't really need to have like that break, but yeah. uh, I couldn't just like skip it because of like their laws there. So it was a bit of a challenge for me to do like nine hours and like just commit to, you know, like their criteria of like, you know, trying to perform well and just like keeping up with them. Absolutely. Absolutely. And 
It must be said that the fact that we are in a Muslim country here in Oman and those factors are both taken into consideration having to have shorter working hours and here especially at OQ we have um, these um, taken into consideration so that's definitely to be uh, taken for granted if I may say. And alongside with managing your time and um, having to create your own small society that helps you make Ramadan more interesting and enjoyable there must have been something we have done, all of us I believe that to help us, you know, make this Ramadan um, Ramadan experience better and, you know, more recallable, not as tough as it could be. Uh, it was, in fact, a bit hard for me to, like, have, um, you know, like, the activities that we're used to, like, or, like, have, like, uh, an activity because um, the Omani community there, or, like, a com like, we had a Muslim community there, but, like, it was a bit different than what we're used to. Okay. So, having, like, a community that you can actually relate to and, like, be, like, feel like that you belong to them, um, was kind of a challenge because like even like the students themselves like the Omani students were yeah. like you can can count them in your hand like by, by your hands like there like there were not many Omani students there so and um, also it was hard for us to like uh, you know just like make an arrangement and get together because we were not from the same university we were yeah. like from different universities when like some of them had to travel to actually come to Boston where like where I studied where my university is and it was like kind of like the meeting point for us yeah um so it was kind of hard for us to just like arrange the, those things and like have you know some of them have to like uh, arrange it like around their schedule you know like they had classes and everything so like you know just to have a day where they can travel and just like they can drop everything and you know come to Boston just to have a bar you know that's true so yeah it was a bit hard for us to like arrange the, those gatherings and like just have a community that we feel like we belong to uh, but you know we we try to like make the best out of it but of course despite all those challenges there still can be some memorable memorable moments where we could still be like oh yeah that was that was that's the time where we enjoyed Ramadan even if it was a little a uh, little tough I mean, what about you, Ammar? Like, how was it being in Leeds and having uh, to spend Ramadan? Yeah, so for me, it was the exact opposite of what uh, Bilqis mentioned. So in Leeds, we had a fairly large uh, Omani community there. Okay. So um, we used to arrange gatherings, uh, weekly gatherings uh, for iftar. Um, and we would have, uh, each one would bring his own, his own dish. We would share uh, a meal together. And um, there is a funny memory that I remember uh, one time we did uh, a competition for the best dish. Oh. So we had a committee that uh, would try all the dishes and then decide on, on the best dish of the, of the day. I would want to be in that committee. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah so, so those were, uh, those were nice memories. Uh, we looked forward to, to those gatherings because it just uh, made us feel uh, like we were back home. That's true. I mean, just imagining that definitely brings like some sense of warmth and also being contained within a um, place that you could relate to. Wow, that must have been really, really special for you guys. I mean, it definitely created that little community over there for you to help you at least um, adapt to how difficult it can be. Well, it wasn't exactly the same for me. I mean, it was more like the experience Balqis had, uh, except I had it with a uh, non-Muslim family, but they were trying their best actually to, you know, help me with the whole cooking, being that late, as well as like staying late. Uh, to have that iftar with me, which I all appreciate for them uh, doing that for me. Of course, these experiences, guys, like they could have some toughness in them, but we're still gonna cherish them for a long time to come. And to all Muslims being away from their families, having to spend Ramadan abroad, we understand the struggle and we wish for you to come back safely and you enjoy the Ramadan this one or the next ones with your families and don't have to struggle again. What experience you've had abroad with Ramadan, Balqis and Ammar. And we're absolutely glad to get to hear that from you and to share it with the whole OQ family. It is really nice to be back and like, uh, especially like here working in a place like OQ where we have this special work arrangement during Ramadan. Uh, this can help us, you know, maintain productivity and as well have, uh, you know, uh, balance in our day. That's true. And in my case, uh, being in the desert is hard as it is. And so having this uh, special Ramadan arrangement uh, helps us a lot during this month. That is true and it is uh, to be appreciated by our uh, company to make sure that the whole family remains productive and still have that balance in between. We thank our guests for joining us today and sharing their experience of being abroad during Ramadan. We have definitely enjoyed that. And to our viewers, we hope you enjoyed this special video podcast. Enjoy the rest of your Ramadan and have a blessed one.